Good morning, First Unitarian. Last weekend was the 50th anniversary of the Stonewall Riots, a riot started by a black trans woman in direct response to police brutality towards LGBTQ plus people. And I was set to celebrate the way I normally do, maybe going out to the bar with friends, getting my drink made with the vodka sponsoring Pride Party, coming downtown the next morning to the parade if I could get up, perhaps putting on my green FUSD Pride shirt and marching in the parade this year. I usually decide the day or two before. Then we would go to the park and walk the booze and people watch, maybe watch a performer on the main stage while holding our rainbow umbrella to shade us. Standing there remembering that we forgot to pack the clack fan again. You know, pride. But like everything else in 2020, a year so far, that I visualize as a big grimy dumpster on fire, it didn't work out that way. There's no parade or party at the bar or festival. So I started to think, how do I celebrate pride? What does that even mean? Was I celebrating my pride at all? Were we? What pride was I not celebrating this year? Y'all, I have been at home by myself thinking a lot. For starters, Stonewall is a far off concept to me. I'm 35. I didn't live through that or the AIDS pandemic like my LGBTQ elders. A term that I really tried to think of a cute name for so it didn't sound like I was being shady, by the way. Quelders? Gaytriarchs? I don't know. Truthfully, I didn't really know anything about Stonewall until I was in my late 20s, maybe even 30s, although I respect it as part of my history. So today, I'm not going to talk about marches or riots, though to be clear, I am 100% for them in the context of Pride or Black Lives Matter. Every form of protest works. I had to define my pride from my experience to do some inner rioting. As the black queer poet Jericho Brown puts it, coming out to myself. When I got down to it, I couldn't talk about pride without talking about shame and fear. They are opposites after all. So let's start there. On the macro level, being an LGBTQ person, you still get messages that you should be ashamed or fearful of who you are often. In 2019, instances of hate crimes against us, especially trans people, went up. Not to mention one survey that people's discomfort around LGBTQ people also went up. Only 55% of people are okay with LGBTQ co coworkers. Nearly one fifth of students identifying as LGBTQ are physically assaulted, and over one tenth of them are assaulted because of their gender expression. Two thirds have reported being sexually harassed some studies show that 25 to 50% of homeless youth identify as LGBTQ. Overall, more than 1.8 million LGBTQ youth between the ages of 13 and 24 in the U.S. seriously consider suicide each year. Adults also are much more likely to attempt suicide or suffer from addiction or mental illness. Gay panic defenses for murdering us still exist in 40 of the 50 states, and healthcare for trans people is currently under attack. Personally, growing up in Laramie, Wyoming, and walking by the courthouse packed with news vans covering the Matthew Shepard murder on the way to my first summer job, I got a pretty clear message. I had to consider what doing this homily would mean. I would be out. Several people I asked to help with the worship today had to make the choice to not do it for that reason, a good reason. And that doesn't even cover the small everyday shames and fears, like feeling sad that I can't have a child in the same way that I imagined or saw around me growing up. Or when a student at my school asks if I'm married, and I say, no, not yet. Then they ask if I have a girlfriend. 
No, I don't. Do I get to tell them about my partner James, a man I love? Like in the song, throughout your whole life, we have to come out over and over and over again each time, wondering if you should or you can. Having grown up Catholic, sitting up wondering at night if maybe they're right and I am going to hell. Even just deciding where and when to hold hands can be a big choice, like in a poem earlier. If hearing all that makes you feel discomfort, good. Me too. So what about the pride? When I first started writing this homily, I had to stop after that first section for a bit. Naming your shames and fears can really suck. But then the optimist in me kicked in. Wasn't that the part to be proud of? Even though all that exists, some people, maybe even me, are willing to be who they are. Doesn't my pride, like yours, come from those fears and shames that have been set aside for a greater purpose? Organizations like the Trevor Project nationally and Rainbow Alley and the center here in Denver provide help to LGBTQ youth and adults. Schools and districts, at least mine, have made a point to talk about bullying of LGBTQ youth and how to stop it. Youth who report having at least one accepting adult were 40% less likely to report a suicide in the past year. Let me say that one again for you. LGBTQ youth who report having at least one accepting adult were 40% less likely to report a suicide attempt in the past year. I see many people standing up to be that one accepting adult and I strive to be the one with the youth I serve. In person and on social media, people are speaking up about unjust laws and executive orders taking rights from trans people or allowing murder of LGBTQ people. I try to override my fears and speak up in person and online as well. And although I chicken out sometimes, sometimes I don't. The Supreme Court ruling last week made it safer for me to do this homily or talk about a person I love at work. I see the 55% as a glass literally half full. And I have found in my workplaces the percent is relatively higher. Someday, when a kid asks me if I'm married, I will be able to say yes, a change made in my lifetime. A few friends of ours celebrated their first Father's Day last Sunday as new dads. Though it may not look the same, I could be a dad too. A damn good one too, if it comes to be. Coming out to people is a gift I get to give to people now. I choose to share with you who I am because I believe that you deserve to see me. If that is something that I have to do over and over again in my life, I can have gratitude for that. I also happen to find a church where I hear what I know to be true. If there is a God, they wouldn't even consider sending me to hell for loving who I love. These victories and that work is my pride. I don't need a signature cocktail, a parade, festivals, performers, or even a clack fan for that pride. Which is good because I still would have forgotten the fan. I'll leave you with this thought by queer author Carmen Maria Machado. Pride should not be a smug acknowledgement of a job well done, or a job that's done at all. If you understand the work to be over, you are mistaken. If you are beloved by your police force, by your government, by straight people and cis people and white people, you have nothing to be proud of. In a moment, 
you'll have some time to think about the question, what shame have you overcome to be proud? I would love to see your answers. Thank you, and keep fighting to be proud.